The Bible says, where two or three are gathered in his name, he is in their midst. And so let us give him all our attention as we go into the word. This morning we'll begin our devotional period by making use of hymn number 82. Hymn number 82. Before Jehovah's awful throne. And we are singing all the stanzas. Sovereign power with the rain, made us of clay and formed us men. And when like wandering sheep we stray, He brought us to. His fold again We'll crown His gate With thankful song High as the heart of voices raised And earth with her Thousand tongues shall fill his court with sounding grace. Wide as the world is his. Command, vast as eternity is love, famous the rock is true shall stand. Our Father and our King in heaven, we continue to praise and honor you for such an opportunity you have given to us. Another morning is here and we praise your name for our lives. It is time for us to reflect on your word. As the Holy Spirit, we pray and invite you to dwell in our midst. Take us through the word. Lead us into all truth and fill our spirits. With all blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. My name is Theophilus Collins from PESDAC. And this morning we have Pastor Brown to lead us in our devotion. The scripture that has been selected for this message is taken from 2 Kings. Chapter, 12, chapter 2, verse 12 to 14. 2 Kings, chapter 2, verses 12 to 14. Let us hear the word of God. And Elisha saw it, and he cried out, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and its horsemen, so he saw him no more, and he took hold.
hold of his own clothes and tore them into two pieces. 13. He also took up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood by the bank of the Jordan. Verse 14. Then he took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he had struck the water, he was divided, it was divided this way and that. And Elisha crossed over. Amen. Amen. Okay. All right. For our hymn of meditation, we will take 506. 506. And we'll do only the first stanza. 506. The mighty fortress is our God. The mighty fortress is our God. Abuok never failing. Our helper, he amid the flood of mortal ills prevailing. For still our race and foe does seek to work us more. His cross and power are great, and anguish cruel hate. All that is not his equal. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Good the Lord is good, all and all the time, I know that heaven is so happy to see all of us gathered together this morning. The Lord is always happy when his children could come together and seek his face. And he is willing to bless and bless and bless because his children are waiting on him. Today, because you have been counted among the living, your life is precious to the Lord. God has a need for your life. And God has a use, a purpose for your life today. I pray that the Lord will be allowed in so that he can control, lead, and direct our lives that we might glorify his name. Because he has used for our lives, he calls us into partnership. Partnership to win souls for his kingdom. Are you willing to join? Shall we pray? Our dear God and Father in heaven this morning, we praise your name and magnify you. We thank you, O Father, that you care for us so much that we marvel. But Lord, it's because you are a loving God. We thank you for all the blessings. This morning, Father, I pray that you set me aside. But Lord, let your spirit take over and speak to every heart this morning. I pray, O God, that you, you fill us with understanding. And that by your grace, you'll empower us to go out and work for you, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This morning, we are talking about releasing the mantle. Releasing the mantle. If you look into history, you'll find that every epoch in human history, God has called someone or some people to proclaim his word. Since the inception of sin, 
man has to be saved and God has always called his people to lead out, to direct people to him so that they can be saved. You remember Noah's time? Noah prepared the ark so that those who would believe would be saved. Moses was sent to deliver Israel so that they could be priests for the Lord. If you read Exodus chapter 19, you see that God intended that the whole of Israel, the Israelites will be a nation of priests who will then proclaim God's goodness before the entire universe. So God's desire is to save. And that promise he gave in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 still stands. It is God's plan of salvation for humanity. Sinful man, sinful woman, sinful beings need to be saved. And God has put in place that plan. But interestingly, he engages you and I to be part of this whole plan of saving souls for his kingdom. Beloved, if you read what, if you go over what Elder read for us, you'll find that Elijah had been chosen by God to proclaim his word. And God has used him mightily in Israel. You remember, he was like us, but he was able to command that for three years there was no rain, isn't it? It means that when we link up with God, God gives us power to do those things that humanly we cannot do. And so when he collaborated with God, when he partnered with God, he was able to stop the rains from falling. You remember what happened on Mount Carmel? There he showed the power of God. Now, just after that, you remember also that he was threatened. And unfortunately, this powerful prophet got discouraged. He feared, so he ran away. He fled. At that very moment, he had forgotten that God had used him previously to do all these great exploits. Beloved, because he was human. Nevertheless, as long as human beings will link up with God, God will use them mightily. God will manifest his power in the lives of those who give their lives to him. And so that is exactly what happened with Elijah. As long as he was connected, God used him to accomplish his purpose. If you go into 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 4, you'll find that when he had to fly, uh, flee, uh, he asked God some questions. The Bible says in 1 Kings 19, verse 4, that, but he himself went a, day, a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he prayed that he might die. Look at it. He prayed that he might die and said, It is enough. Now, Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my father's. What do you read here? What do you see here? A prayer of desperation and discouragement. But we thank God we serve a God who, who is so kind and loving who understands our situations, that when we get discouraged, God is so near to help us. When we are afraid, God is so near to rescue us and to give us hope to move forward. And so if you read further from verse 15 through to 21, God assured him, but then God also did something for him. He asked him to do some work for him by anointing some people and that included Elisha the prophet 
So the time came for him to go to heaven. And interestingly, Elisha joined him to see how it was going to end with him. Now, another thing I want to draw your attention to is that when he was going to be taken to heaven, he asked Elijah, uh, Elisha asked, oh, I'm sorry, Elijah asked Elisha to stay behind. But then Elisha said, no way, I will go with you. I want to stress this because of one thing, that Elisha was loyal to the cause that he had been called to. Are we loyal to God's cause? He had been called and therefore he said, I was not leaving Elijah to go alone. I will go with him. I want to see how it will end with him. So he was determined to go with Elijah. And what happened was that as soon as he was taken, that is, Elijah was taken, Elisha saw him going and he cried out. But before then, Elijah asked him, what do I do for you, my son? If you are asked that question this morning, what do I do for you? What will be your answer? You want to pass your examinations? Your business should thrive? What will, you, uh, will be your answer? And then he said, I need a double portion of your spirit. Amen. Amen. Is that a good answer? Do you think it's a good answer? Why? Why? Because if you have the Holy Spirit with you, you can do everything. If you have the Holy Spirit with you, he will empower you to accomplish so much beyond what you can even imagine. And therefore, his answer was right. Give me a double portion of your spirit. Yes, and lo and behold, before he ascended, as Elijah ascended, his mantle fell down and Elisha took it. So Elijah had Elijah's mantle and that gave him also the encouragement to move on and to be able to carry out the work that Elijah was doing. He sought to continue Elijah's ministry. And so he was willing to give his life as Elijah did to God so that God can use him. But he needed help and that help was the Holy Spirit. And that's why he asked for a double portion of the Spirit. This morning, beloved, I want to encourage you. Let us ask of the Lord a double portion of his Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit comes, we can do great things to the glory of God. In fact, the Lord is willing to save mankind, but he wants to use you and I. But we cannot do it without the help of the Holy Spirit. That is why the need for us to come and ask for the Holy Spirit to be imbued, imbued upon us, to be poured on us. Because if we have the Holy Spirit, then we can do God's business for him. And because Elisha took over from Elijah, God used him mightily. 
One of his statements that I like most is found in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 16. When they were surrounded by enemies, his statement at that very moment made a very impressive mark on me. I'm referring to 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 16. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 16. He says, So he answered, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are... Do you believe this? Do you believe this? Then why do you get afraid sometimes? And it is a fact of life that if we walk with God, those who are with us are more than those who are against us. It's God's word and it is true anytime, anywhere. Believe it that those who are with us are more than those who are against us. And if so, then the Lord will defeat them. So why are you afraid of witches and wizards and all kinds of things? The important thing is to be linked to God, to be connected to God. If you are connected to God, you have nothing to fear. Beloved, as Christians who are growing in the Lord, we must shun all these things that, you know, put fear in us. Because our God is greater than those things that we encounter, those things that we are afraid of. I just want to encourage each one of us that we should remember always in any situation that God is with us and because he is with us, those who are with us are more than those who are against us. Therefore, we can forge ahead, we can move forward in faith and in strength, knowing that the Lord is leading his people. Beloved, God is with us, and God will bless his people. Elijah received, uh, Elisha received the mantle from Elijah. The Eli, Eli, and the Shah and the Jah can be disturbing sometimes. <laughs> and so, Elisha received Elijah's mantle of authority that he could go ahead and carry on with the work that uh, Elijah was doing. And so he had the authority to go. Beloved, the mantle that he received represents the Holy Spirit. And you know that when he received that, he was able to do great exploits for the Lord also. So he made a mark. Elisha made a mark in the history of our world. Now, we can also make a mark if we allow the Holy Spirit to take over. The Lord is much more than willing to give us the Holy Spirit than we can even imagine or ask. Today, we need the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Because our world is filled with wickedness and evil. All around us, what we see is darkness, total darkness. Even we as Christians who have faith in the Lord are discouraged, isn't it? So our world needs to be rescued. And the Lord is willing to do this. The Lord wants to save his people because Satan seems to be winning, but he is a defeated foe already. My brothers and sisters, I want to assure you that the period in which we live requires us. It requires us to really seek God's face every moment of our lives. 
because we live in dangerous times. The world is confused. If you look at the LTBG, whatever, QAA plus and all those things, you realize that the world is confused. It has turned anti-clockwise. We are moving, but we are going backward. And that is where we are now. And the world needs to be rescued. When we say the world needs to be rescued, it is not the world, but the people in the world that need to be rescued. Beloved, we are called upon to be partners with God in order to rescue the world. Today, if you look at the prophecies in the Bible, you find that all of them are being fulfilled. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. What do you find there? It talks about the last days, the perilous times shall come. Men will be pleasures of, you know, and all kinds of things that are mentioned. That they are all present with us. We have become so self-centered and selfish and greedy. Look at the gruesome murders that go on that are being reported every day. Beloved, our world is suffering. The people in the world need to be rescued. But the Lord is depending on you and I to bring hope to the hopeless world and the people in the world. If you consider Matthew chapter 24, verses 6 and 7, what do you find there? You find floods, hunger, starvation, wars, all those things are mentioned there. Are they present with us? Do, do we find them around us? Do we read about them? Beloved, they are not happening for happening's sake. They are telling us something. And that Christ is coming soon. And if so, then we should be ready for his coming. Because he will come for a people who are prepared. And so, beloved, what we are seeing around us requires us to stand up and join the Lord in rescuing our world. The Russian-Ukrainian war, whether we like it or not, we can make politics with it, but whatever it is, it can also trigger a nuclear war. If, if you've been following the story, if you are following the news, it's, it's a, a, a very dangerous war that is being fought. Besides the economic hardships that all the world, all the countries in the world, are facing as a result, it also has the potential to bring about a third world war. And at the same time, Taiwan and uh, China are also flexing their muscles. Russia is teaming up with North, North Korea. So the two leaders have met and talked. Iran is trying. So, uh, my brothers and sisters, there's confusion all around. But God will put the pieces together and rescue his people. And that is our hope. And that is what gives us the strength to move forward, beloved. So, our presence here is not w wasteful. It's not uh, uh, to, be, uh, to, to, to be considered as a waste. No, no, no. We are here to be blessed by God. We are here to be, to, to be prepared by God for a bigger work for him. A greater work to be done for him. God would want to use us to prepare a people for his coming. He is counting on you and I, beloved. That is why our presence here is so important. And therefore, let us make sure that we benefit from our being here before we live here. Before we live here, we must be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Before we live here, 
we should be connected to God. In fact, not only being connected, but we should be prepared to live his life before the world. Before, because we are spectacle for the world. Beloved, we stand as a called people to witness before the world and warn them about what the danger that is coming because our world is a dying world. Christ calls us to join him so that we together can save souls for his kingdom. Beloved, let me emphasize that if we can't help someone to be saved, then we cannot also work out our salvation either. I want to repeat that. If we can't help others to be saved, then we are not also able and we cannot work out our own, our own salvation either. Because once you are touched by the love of Jesus Christ and the strength and the power of the Holy Spirit is upon you, you cannot stay. You want to direct others to God. When you receive good news, you want to share, isn't it? Bad news, we don't. But for good news, we want to share. So our salvation, our personal salvation, is it good news or bad news? Good news. Do we share it? If it is good news and we believe it is good news, why are we hesitating to share it? Beloved, this morning, my main aim is that we will stand up, join the Lord, and go on his errand to win souls for the kingdom. Because we have been saved, therefore we must ensure that others are also saved. We are not going to heaven alone. We must go with them. And daily people are dying without the Lord. Please, my brothers and sisters, it's time for us to also look at God's work and the souls that God intends to save. You know, if you read Daniel chapter 12, verse 3, it tells us this. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever are you a star do you want to be a star hello do you want to be a star yes and the point is if we go to heaven without the stars we can't be there anyway we are going with our stars. So this is the time for us to make sure that we are leading people to Christ. And those we lead are the ones that we go with as our stars. Your family members, your neighbors, your colleagues, your friends, have they given their lives fully to Jesus Christ? What influence do you have on them as a Christian, as a Seventh-day Adventist Christian, as one who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ, as the one who knows he is coming again, as the one who has asked for the power of the Holy Spirit to be poured upon you? Every Adventist knows Matthew chapter 28 verses 18 through 20, isn't it? If you have been baptized as a seven-day Adventist, surely, certainly, you know Matthew 28, 18 through 20. What is there? It's the Gospel Commission. And who is to do it? Who is to do it? The pastor. Elders. Personal ministries leader. So who? All of us. Amen. What about Matthew 24, 14? It's also another text every Adventist knows. What does it say? 
And this gospel of the kingdom shall be it shall be preached in nowhere the world. If it has not been preached, are we tired of this place? Are we? Surely? Are we? Oh, some people are not tired of this place. They still love to. If you've been married for one year, you need some more years, isn't it? You want to say. But, but, but if you are also courting, then you want to see the end of it before Christ comes. But whatever it is, Christ must come. We cannot wait for too long. It's getting terrible. Beloved, so the message must be preached. But those who have been privileged and now note that. That you know the truth, you are privileged. And the privileged people are to bring this information, this knowledge, this good news to the rest of the world. And so the Lord is waiting on us. Beloved, and God, because he wants to save the world, is ready to give us anything, provide us with anything that will enable us to be successful in this business of his. John 20, 21, Jesus says, and I want you to refer to John 20, 21 with me. John 20, 21 says, so Jesus said to them again, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also, I also send you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. Will you go? Will you go? Do you really mean it? Yes. Will you go? Yes. All of us? Yes. Amen. Amen. It's a promise to God. And heaven is marking it. So when we go back, let us go and do God's work. And the Lord will give us what we require to be able to accomplish this. And that's why in Acts chapter 1 verse 8... Acts chapter 1 verse 8, Jesus told the disciples, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Beloved, Elijah left his mantle for Elisha. And Elisha did a great job for God. Today, Jesus Christ has promised us and he has sent us his Holy Spirit. If we will allow him, he will also use us to do great work for the Lord. He does not force anyone, but he entreats everyone to be an avenue to win souls for the kingdom. We need the mantle of Elijah today. We need a double portion of his spirit today. Indeed, beloved, we need the presence of the Holy Spirit today. If the Holy Spirit is with us, we shall fear nothing. If the Holy Spirit is with us, we shall be bold in proclaiming the goodness of God. If the Holy Spirit is with us, he will give us utterance. If the Holy Spirit is with us, he will do signs and wonders and miracles in our lives that the world will see and they will believe in God. The people that were there at the beginning of the Christian church were not different from us. The only difference is that they allowed the Holy Spirit to use them. And so today, if we decide to allow the Holy Spirit to use us, we will be doing the same things that even greater things than they did. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? Sure, it is. Because if we read Joel chapter 2 from verse 28, you'll find that God is willing to pour out his spirit upon us. In these last days, 
God is going to do greater things for us. If you read Malachi chapter 4 verse 5, you see that we still need Elijah today. The, the spirit of Elijah today because the world is going bad. It's growing from west to what? From bad to west and then west to what? Western maybe. <laughs> But beloved, the point is that this is the time we should cooperate with God. I want to end by quoting from uh, Luke chapter 11, verse 13. Luke 11, please turn there and if you have not marked that place, mark it in your Bible because it's a promise. Luke chapter 11, verse 13. Luke eleven thirteen 13 says, if you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So ask him and you will receive. Do you believe this? That if you ask sincerely, you will have? Yes, it is the power of the Holy Spirit that will enable us to live for God. Let us give our lives willingly to him and the Spirit will use us. He will be with us. He will direct us. He will control our lives and we will be a different people altogether. Adventists, we are waiting for the coming of the Lord. But Christ won't come until the work has been done. But he can also ignore us and use others to accomplish that work. If we have been privileged, but we abuse that opportunity, the Lord can choose anyone. The Lord can choose anyone to do his work. But I pray that you and I will be part of those who will work with the Lord in preparing souls for the kingdom. God is inviting you to come. To come and ask for the Holy Spirit. Are you willing? Yes. Will you come? Yes. Will you work for the Lord? Yes. The Lord bless you. Shall we then rise up if we want to? We are all going to pray individually and talk to God. That we are willing to have the Holy Spirit. We are willing to work with the Holy Spirit. We are willing to allow the Holy Spirit to use us to do the work he has assigned us. The theme for the quinquennium is I will go. We all want to be part of it, but we cannot do it without the Holy Spirit. So please, please pray and ask God for the Spirit. Because that is the promise we have read in Luke chapter 11 verse 13. If we ask, he will give us the Holy Spirit. For a moment, for a minute, please pray. O oh Lord our God, your people are standing before you. Lord, may you look down upon us with favor. And may you pour your spirit upon us, O oh God. For we realize our need, O oh God, that if we can do anything to honor you and to glorify your name, we need the Holy Spirit. We cannot do it in our own strength. Father, we are weak, for we are flesh. But in your power, we can do great exploits. 
Therefore, this morning, O oh Lord, we call upon your name that pour your spirit upon us. Father, give us a double portion of your Holy Spirit that he will transform our lives, that our characters will be changed, that we will be like Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Father, we know that you are preparing your jewels for heaven. I plead, oh God, that let each one of us standing here before you today be part of your jewels. We are therefore praying, oh God, what we need at this time is your Holy Spirit. Father in heaven, give us your Holy Spirit. Lord, we are pleading, give us your Holy Spirit. If there is anything that will hinder him from being poured upon us, we ask, oh Lord, take care of it for us. The blood of Jesus should take care of our sins, oh God. And Lord, justify us so that we can qualify to have your Holy Spirit. This very moment, oh Lord, we plead with you, have mercy upon us. Those sins we have cherished for so long, we pray today, through the power of your Holy Spirit, let us let them go. Amen. Father, we leave them at the foot of the cross today. And we ask, oh Lord, we surrender to you, so take over. Take over now, oh Lord. Fill us with your Spirit. And give us the power to proclaim your goodness to the world. We have tested how good you are. We know it. We have experienced it. And Lord, we are asking, give us the power and the boldness to move out and share this information. And Lord, we do not ask for success, but we ask that we will be faithful to the end. May your name be glorified, for we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Secretary, respectfully, please come and give us the announcement.